Good afternoon, I'm Diane Ehrman from the Learning Resources Center, Jackson County campus. I'm the Learning Lab instructor and I help students in biological sciences and in nursing. And this particular video we're conducting will be on the basic review for dosage, dosage and calculations, specifically for nursing level one. However, all levels are able to use this in order to review uh, materials in dosage and calculation. Dosage and calculation is based on dimensional analysis method, which is used to convert units from English to metric or from metric to metric. In order to accurately solve problems in dosage and calculations, nurses must develop expertise in the knowledge of using conversion factors and the application of that knowledge. The three basic units of measurements within the metric system are the liter, which me measures volume, the gram, which me measures mass, and the meter, which measures length. Now, relative to liters or volume, nurses generally use IV fluids and these are me uh, calculated or calibrated in milliliters. Relative to the gram or the mass, typically nurses are going to administer medications such as antibiotics that are measured or dispensed in milligrams. And relative to the meter, usually we're going to use this part of the metric system to measure wounds. Now, I'd like to make a notation here that in nursing, the liter and the gram are commonly used in solving problems relative to the administration of IV fluids, injections, and oral suspensions, while again, the meter is useful for measuring wounds. I will actually review six different types of dosage and calculation problems, beginning with number one, which is considered a non-conversion problem. So I'll go ahead and read the problem and then go over the three steps that it takes to solve the problem and then we'll do the calculations. So the first problem relative to non-conversion problems is a doctor orders 60 milligrams of ibuprofen. The bottle reads 50 milligrams per 1.25 milliliters. How many milliliters will you administer? The first step in doing dosage calculation problems is to write the doctor's order, which in this problem is 60 milligrams. The second step is what is on hand from the pharmacy, and that comes up in a bottle labeled 50 milligrams per 1.25 milliliters. The third step is to ask ourselves the question, do you need a conversion factor? And in this problem, the answer is no. So you take step number one, and that becomes the first numerator, 60 milligrams divided by one. You multiply that by what's on hand. Now, in order to determine what should go in the numerator and what should go in the denominator, you have to ask the question, what are you solving the problem for in units? In this particular problem, you're solving for milliliters, which is underlined in the problem. Therefore, you must put the milliliters in the numerator. So I add or write 1.25 milliliters divided by 50 milligrams. Since that functions what comes from pharmacy as a unit. Uh, so the next step is in solving the problem is to cancel out like units. In this case, milligrams in the numerator and milligrams in the denominator are alike. Therefore, they, be, they can be canceled out. Now, what's remaining is, what exa is exactly what we want, and that is milliliters. Therefore, we will then multiply the numerators, 60 times 1.25 milliliters, which equals 75 milliliters. And then we multiply the denominators, which is 1 times 50, is 50. Therefore, we're left with 75 milliliters divided by 50, which is equivalent to 1.5 milliliters. The second type of problem that nurses are required to know are called conversion problems. So in this particular problem, we are going to need a conversion factor 
as we will see. So here's the problem. You have an order to give 600 milligrams of liquid Tylenol to your patient. The bottle reads 64 milligrams per 0 0.8 milliliters. And the question is, how many teaspoons will you administer? In this particular problem, you're going to go from metric to English conversions. And so here are our three steps that we must write down. Step number one is we write the doctor's order, which is 600 milligrams. Step two, what is on hand from the pharmacy? Well, the bottle reads 64 milligrams per 0 0.8 milliliters. In step three, we ask ourselves the question, do you need a conversion factor? In this problem, the answer is yes. And what is that conversion factor is the next thing that we write, which is five milliliters equals one teaspoon. Now we're going to set this problem up exactly the same way that we set up the last problem. We start with the doctor's order, 600 milligrams divided by one times and again, we're solving for teaspoons, so we want that to be in some numerator on the top number. But our next step is to put what's the concentration, and that is 0 0.8 milliliters divided by 64 milligrams times, again, one teaspoon, we're solving for teaspoons, divided by five milliliters, which is the conversion factor. So you cancel out like units again, milligrams cancels, and milligrams, and milliliters, and milliliters. So now we're left with exactly what they've asked us to solve for, and that is teaspoons. So when you do your multiplication of all the numerators, you get 480 teaspoons divided by, then you multiply the denominators, 320. As you divide, and of course you'd be using a calculator, 480 divided by 320 equals 1.5 teaspoons, and this is our final answer. Problem number three is what we commonly call a reconstitution problem. In this problem, the nurse is going to be required to add um, 1.8 milliliters of sterile water to come up with a concentration of 250 milligrams per one milliliter. But I'll go ahead and, and from the beginning and read the problem. Your patient has an order for 175 milligrams of ampicillin sodium to be given IV every six hours. The pharmacy sends ampicillin sodium containing 500 milligrams. Your drug book recommends reconstitution with 1.8 milliliters of sterile water, which ends up being a concentration of 250 milligrams for every one milliliter and we're solving the problem. In this case, we're asking how many milliliters will you administer to the patient? So step one, again, same three steps. Write the doctor's order first. The doctor's order is 175 milligrams. Step two, what is on hand from the pharmacy? Well, it's 250 milligrams per one milliliter after we re reconstituted it. Step three, do you need a conversion factor? In this case, no, we don't. So we, again, we start with step one, the doctor's order, and that goes in the numerator, the first numerator, that is, 175 milligrams divided by one times one milliliter divided by 250 milligrams, and that's because we are solving for milliliters, so that has to be in a numerator. It has to be in the top someplace. Uh, as you can see, milligrams cancels out because what's alike in the numerator and if it's the same in the denominator, we can cancel those units. So now we're left with multiplying 175 times 1 milliliters, which is 175 milliliters, divided by 250. So our final answer is 0 0.7 milliliters. Now I'd like to just mention one thing, and that is make sure as student nurses, as nurses in training, that you check your rounding rules. Because if you have a medication that's under one milliliter, it's less than one milliliter, you must uh, keep it to, uh, you must place the zero in front of it, 0 0.7 milliliters, and normally it would be to the hundredth place, but because we do not have a number that follows the seven, we, it, it is simply going to be 0 0.7 milliliters. Number four is 
an IV push problem. And I'll read the problem. Mrs. Smith has an order to give Ativan 2 milligrams IV 15 minutes prior to the scheduled procedure. The pharmacy supplies you with Ativan 4 milligrams per one milliliter. How many milliliters will you draw up from the vial? Step one, write the doctor's order, which is two milligrams. Step two, what is on hand from the pharmacy? Well, what is on hand is four milligrams per one milliliter. And step three, we ask the question, do you need a conversion factor? And in this case, the answer is no. So the doctor's order gets set up in the first numerator, two milligrams divided by one multiplied by one milliliter divided by four milligrams. So again, we put the milliliter in the numerator, one milliliter liter, that is, because we're solving for milliliters. And of course, it's divided by four milligrams, which is the concentration on hand from the pharmacy. So milligrams cancels in the numerator and denominator. You're left now multiplying the two numerators, two times one milliliters equals two milliliters and then multiply the denominators, one times four is four. So your final answer is 0 0.5 milliliters. Again, make sure you always put a zero before the decimal place when you're dealing with medication that has to be administered in a milliliter form. Problem number five is an IV flow rate problem. And here's the problem. The pharmacy supplies you with one gram bag of ampicillin mixed in 100 milliliters of normal saline. The tubing drop factor reads 15 drops per one milliliter. How fast will you run the IV in milliliters per hour if the medication is to be administered over 45 minutes? Well, step one, we are again gonna write the doctor's order, which is, 100 milliliters is to be infused over 45 minutes. Now in this particular case, the one gram of ampicillin is mixed into the fluid volume. Therefore, we don't really need that as part of the problem. We don't need the one gram of medicine because it's inside of the 100 milliliters. Step two, what is on hand from the pharmacy? What's on hand is what's supplied by the pharmacy, which is a two being that delivers 15 drops per one milliliter. And that's important to know. Step number three, do you need a conversion factor? Yes. Because we're solving the problem in milliliters per hour, yet we've only given uh, the problem just says 100 milliliters over 45 minutes, we have to see that those two units are different, hours and minutes are different. Therefore, in step three, we do need a conversion factor. We need something that tells us how many minutes equals how many hours. And of course, we all know that 60 minutes equals one hour. So that will be our conversion factor. So let's set our problem up. The doctor's order, 100 milliliters divided by 45 minutes multiplied by 60 minutes divided by one hour. And the reason why we set it up this way is because we're solving for milliliters per hour. And as you can see, the minutes cancels out and we are left with the correct units of milliliters per hour. So let's do our multiplication. 100 milliliters times 60 is 600 milliliters divided by 45 times one hour is 45 hours. And now, of course, we wanna get it down to an hourly rate. And so that actually uh, calculates out to 133.3 milliliters per hour. Because anytime you have in your rounding rules, if you have something that's greater than one milliliters, you must round it to the 10th place, which is why we have 133.3 to the 10th place. The last problem that we will do is uh, a drop factor problem. The doctor orders 250 milliliters of normal saline to be run over six hours. How many micro drops per minute will you run the IV? Step number one again, write the doctor's order, which is 250 milliliters to be infused over six hours. Our step two, what is on hand from the pharmacy? Well, this time we're going to have a different drop factor, a different type of tubing, which delivers 60 microdrops 
per one milliliter. And do you need a conversion factor for step three? And the answer is yes. The conversion factor is again 60 minutes equals one hour. So we'll begin to set our problem up as we've done the other five problems. So the doctor's order is 250 milliliters to be infused over six hours times. Now our drop tubing factor, 60 micro drops divided by one milliliter times one hour over 60 minutes. Once again, we cancel like units, milliliters cancels and hours cancels, leaving us with exactly what we're supposed to solve for, which is underlined, micro drops per minute. So when you actually do your calculations and you multiply 250 times 60, it equals 15,000 microdrops divided by, that now we multiply our denominator, six times 60 minutes equals 360 minutes. Now as we use our calculator to calculate the final answer, we actually get 41.6. However, we have to round it to a whole number because you cannot have a partial drop when you're administering IV fluids. It only drops in whole drops. So because 41.6 or 0.6 is higher than 0.5 that is, we must round it to the nearest whole number, which is 42. If it was below, if it was 0.4 or below, we would round it down to 41. So our final calculation is 42 microdrops per one minute. This concludes our session on the basic review of dosage calculation problems. Thank you.